Well, authentic leadership is where the leader makes decisions based not on the circumstances or the situations in which the leader finds themselves, but on a pre-examined template based on uh, an ethical and values-led approach. Well, I think there are two main reasons why. One is for the followers, the people who are following the leader. If the leader makes decisions always based on the contingent response to the circumstance and the situation, the followers never really know where the leader is going to go next. If the leader is making decisions based on an examined template, an authentic template, then the followers know that the leader's decisions are always going to fall within the bounds of that template. And that gives them some sense of consistency and predictability. And these things are very important to followers. So that's one thing. But I think the other reason why authenticity is important is if you look at what's been happening recently in terms of financial meltdowns, people were making decisions very high up in organisations based on the immediate contingent opportunity to make profit and to turn over profit rather than something which was sustainable and long term. Well, values, academically speaking, are certain modes of behaviour or end states of existence which are considered to be more desirable than others. And they're activated by the situation or the circumstances in which we find ourselves. So I don't spend my entire time thinking to myself, I am generous, I am generous. But when a situation activates in me reference to that value, I act generously. The end states of existence that I talked about will be things like um, a knowledge, for example, is an end state of existence, which somebody might deem is worth pursuing, or comfort is another one which somebody might deem is worth pursuing. My observation over time has been that there are really three routes that people take to their values. And the first, simplest and perhaps the most common route is what you might call the adopted or absorbed values set, where from a very early age we are given a set of values by our parents, our teachers, our guides, our siblings. And in Western Europe it is generally based on some form of Judeo-Christian approach to values. And we don't question these values particularly, we simply adopt them uh, we live with them and for many of us we put them down when they're an encumbrance, we pick them up when they're not an encumbrance and they have very little impact on our lives. A second route though is where somebody having been given a set of values early on in life finds that life as they experience it really doesn't fit the values set that they have. Maybe something traumatic happens to them uh, as relatively young people, perhaps they're displaced by war, perhaps uh, their parents divorce, perhaps somebody they love has some kind of uh, crippling or debilitating disease or illness, but something happens to them that causes them to say the value set they have really doesn't fit the world as they experience it. And so through this kind of force majeure almost, they re-examine their values and they then find themselves with a set of values that they hold much more tightly because it has been forged in the fires of these experiences that they've had. And then the third route to values is this Socratic concept of, of self-examination. Um, there isn't any force majeure, but there is just the sense that I will not be happy as an individual until and unless I have examined this set of values that I've been given, compared it to other available sets of values, compared it to my own experiences, and created for myself a set of values that I feel are absolutely right for me. So those are the three routes, um, the absorbed route, the, the forced examination and the voluntary examination. One of the, the classic type of experiments that people do is how do people react when they come across an abandoned wallet which is uh, full of money and credit cards and driver's license? And of course this is where people 
engage with their values. Uh, this is the true test of authenticity, not whether you know what the definition is, but whether you behave authentically in a circumstance where you've given choice. So your choice is here, you find the wallet, what are you going to do? Uh, are you going to return it intact uh, by handing it into a police station or by using the address inside it to return it to its owner? Uh, are you going to remove the folding cash and then anonymously return it to its owner? Are you going to keep it for yourself, sell the credit cards for what you can get for them, keep the cash and throw the wallet away? And these are real values-led choices that that circumstance creates for people. Now, in the business world, we're constantly faced with parallels to this. When people give us information in confidence, do we keep it in confidence? Do we share it with other people? Do we act on what we know that we're not supposed to know or do we not act on it because we're not really supposed to know it? And these are decisions that we make. If we make these decisions only in light of the circumstances or the situation as we're experiencing it, we can often make decisions based on selfish drivers. I'm going to use that information to insider trade. I'm going to use that information to help me to get my promotion. If we have a template that says, no, I am not allowed to do that, that is a selfish value that I'm engaging with, which is not appropriate. It's also dishonest, and that's a value that, that I don't hold. My value is to do with honesty. It's also not serving other people. Then we have more chance of, if you like, resisting temptation. It's a way of helping us to behave in business so that we can be proud of ourselves. And of course, one of the reasons why it's become more and more important is because as a society overall, over the last uh, 60 years, we've become much less rather than much more led by values, agreed modes of behavior and ethics. So it's become much more a personal challenge for the individual. Because as a society, we are much less values and ethics driven than we were, let's say, immediately after the Second World War. The authentic leader needs to be driven by high-end other regarding values. And you don't come across these by chance. You have to for some reason or another, examine your values. But once you've done that, then you've got a strong platform that means whatever the circumstances, you have got this externalized template to use to help you make decisions. And authentic leaders' decision-making is therefore likely to be more consistent and better quality because it is using this examined values template as its starting point. It's not to say that the authentic leader will always make the same decision, but it is to say that the authentic leader's decisions will always be informed by and driven by high-end and other regarding values. Now, you only need to look at the things that are happening in the business world at the moment and to look at your own experience in business to feel that for many leaders, this isn't what drives their decision-making. And we can see that poor quality decision-making, selfish rather than selfless decision making is at the root of, of many of the organisational, uh, cultural and operational issues that are besetting organisations throughout the world at the moment. This podcast was produced by Ashridge Business School.